Next up on the Ron Johnson Show, I got a friend of mine, Tony Patterson. Uh, great stories about Tony Patterson, former gopher uh, from St. Louis. But, uh, I mean, he claims the 49ers. This dude's kind of weird with some of the stuff he does. But, you know, what's a football locker room without, without some different guys in there? And uh, so as I bring Tony Patterson into the show, man, I want to appreciate you for joining me. But one story I got to tell quick about Tony before we get into this. Uh, Tony Patterson was a quarterback coming out of high school uh i remember being in practice joker phillips you know he told tells tony to throw us a comeback it's like a 15 to 18 yard route uh where you come back to the sideline tony probably threw it like 10 yards into the ground next day tony's in our meeting room and receivers <laughs> Uh, and it, the, the high school quarterback days, the, the dream of signing with the Gophers play quarterback was over. But, Tony, I want to – so this is – I preface this. I preface this. I love you, man. You're my boy. Uh, we're best friends. But I want to I want to, I want to start there. The transfer portal. So many guys in your situation going from quarterback as a recruit in high school and then coming in, and they just kind of say, ah, man, you, you probably have a better chance of receiver. A lot of guys would have entered the transfer portal after that year – uh, up to their freshman year because you know they could still go out and, and get a red shirt or get something and, and just say I want to go to another school um would you have if you were if you could go back in time would you would you do you think you would have transferred to go play quarterback somewhere else or do you think you're one of those guys you would have stuck it out um first let me say let me start off by saying uh, when I got to Minnesota they they gave me a ball fresh out the <laughs> packets right and I never threw all my balls were the brown dirty balls and I could sling those things about 65. <laughs> I just couldn't throw I couldn't throw the new balls, but um I think you're right, man. The transport portal is it's uh it, it's it's interesting. And and honestly, Minnesota was the only school recruiting me as a quarterback. Um mm -hmm. so other everybody else was recruiting me as wide receiver or DB, which I've never played DB before in my life. But um to be honest, I think that might have been a, a situation where I had to uh, communicate with my high school coach and my family about, you know, the the transfer portal and um, how can that affect you know future, uh, your your future career down the road? Um, specifically here at Cooper, we we've seen um, how the transfer portal could uh, you know affect our athletes. We had a really good class, um, but they just didn't get you know the recruitment we thought that they deserved with all of the transfer uh, athletes in the portal and everything. So, yeah, and now NIL is out there. And you look at these big time recruits, like you say, you guys have had some great recruiting classes at Cooper High School in Minnesota. Um, but you look at the NIL now and NIL companies are allowed, uh, you know, some people call them conglomerates. Some people call them trusts. I mean, they have all these names for them, you know, the 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 uh, forgot the one that Alabama called it, though. But, you know, all these teams have different names for it. You know, whatever you want to call them at the end of the day, it's just a group of dudes who are willing to pay kids money to come play for the college that they went to or they're attached to. What can Minnesota? I mean, because you got Target, Best Buy, uh, General Mills, Land Lakes. You got some big time Fortune 500s in Minnesota. Um, as this thing grows, because the coaches can't be involved, what can Minnesota do as a as a state, you know, and some of these CEOs and VPs do to help some of these high school kids, you know, decide to go to the university, whether it's a thousand dollars here or there, you know, because I don't know what high school kids want. But, you know, what can some of these companies do to help, you know, land some of these big, you know, four or five star recruits that are in Minnesota to stay home? Right. Um, you know, that, that NIL deal, I just think every time I hear that, I just think about your situation, how how much money you could have made back in back in college with that deal. Uh, you know, I would have benefited from from that, from just being your friend. But anyway, <laughs> um, I think I think that NIL here in, in Minnesota is very interesting. We do have a lot of Fortune 500 companies here. Um, but at the same time, I think those Fortune 500 companies um, might not mess with that NIL because it wouldn't benefit them as much yeah. um i think our like the locally the, the like the private companies i think will, mm -hmm. will benefit more um um maybe like a auto dealership or land or lakes or a um uh huntington bank you know i think that maybe those companies can jump on some of those the athletes here and, and provide a nice package um because everything is recruiting now you know it, it it's it's sad it's not sad but it's interesting to see how uh, recruits are now basing their their decision on the school, but also what can they receive by by coming here. Um, I think I think it's going to take a CEO or a, a a president of a of a company that's 
heavily involved in recruiting, maybe a go for alum to maybe get this thing going because um, we, like you said, we do have a lot of four, three, four, five star recruits here in Minnesota. And being that we are the, the you know, the only one major university here for football, I think it's important that we put those deals together to uh, keep these kids home um, to, you know, benefit the program. Yeah. And looking at, Let's bounce to the NFL now. You're a 49ers fan. Uh, Kyle Juszczyk, you know, one of the better fullback tight ends in the NFL. And I think that's the key. Juszczyk lines up at tight end and runs routes from the one-by-one -one position at tight end. Um, Vikings offensive coordinator and head coach now, Kevin O'Connell, uh, made a comment about C.J. Hamm at fullback and said he's a guy uh, that they want on the team. You know, but people are like, well, the Rams didn't use a fullback. So how does C.J. Hamm fit? And then you look across the NFL – there's not a lot of fullbacks, you know, like the Chiefs. And, and you look at all these other teams, you know, it, it's far and few between now with a true fullback, you know, two receiver, two running back, one tight end set. Um, in the high school ranks, you know, because I know you guys sling the ball around too. Um, one, do you guys use a fullback? But two, where do you see the high school – like are, are more kids kind of having to be able to catch if they're playing fullback now? Like what what does the high school fullback look like nowadays? Um typically the, the high school fullback now is that is that H back, right? It's that it's that tight end that can line up um in the backfield or split them out, get them back off the line, move them around. Um I, I we do use it uh a fullback in like short yardage, but it's our tight end. Um yeah. and I think that now with teams are going to spread offenses and, and a lot of offensive coordinators are trying to get the ball in space to to, to their athletes, um, you don't really see a lot of 21 personnel. Um, you know, you got the the, the great use check and C.J. Ham, which, I, you know, I love watching C.J. Ham. He's one of those old school players. But I think the game is evolving now that um, the, that that typical old school fullback is not really um, – I don't want to use the word needed, but it's not utilized like mm -hmm. it used to in the past. And, you know, you have these great – uh, H-back, you know, you got Kelsey, you have, um, uh, you know, just a bunch of these H-backs that are, that are, that can play uh, multiple positions. So I think that fullback position is phasing out with this uh, RPO and spread offense and everything like that. So, um, you know, shout out to the fullbacks, but I think is I think that's, <laughs> that's fading out. Yeah, you got Andrews with the Ravens, you know, and they have a big 300-pound running back fullback. Um, but but Andrews is, is the, the main guy they use. Zach Ertz with the Cardinals. Uh, you got Dallas Goddard. You, you know, you, you like you said, you, you got uh, Kittle, your guy, and he lines up at fullback every once in a while now because he's a blocking tight end. Um, so, yeah, it, it is weird to see that where even with the Gophers, you know, you don't really see them use a fullback. Like they, they go one back, you know, and in tight ends. Like they don't really have a true – fullback their guy was was more of a tight end uh who's now with the uh with the um the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers so yep. it, you just don't see it as much um now we got to go to this because you know we've had a bunch of guys on as of late talking about this man Marion Barber former gopher passed away um you were there my senior year Marion's freshman year when he came in uh, we, we, you were also there though for the Arkansas games and the bowl games in the 10 and 3 season um what what are some things, man, that you'll never forget or you'll remember about Marion? Um, just first, Marion as a person. Um, you know, everybody is really referring to him as, you know, the football player. But just scrolling through social media the last couple of days um, and just reading what everybody has to say about him, man. It's just just him as a person is mm. it, it, he's one of those guys that came in the room and just kind of just lit the room up. You know, he wasn't a very like talkative guy, but. Um, just his actions and and how he cared for people, man. Like that would that's what I would remember the most. I specifically remember um, he lived down the hall from me and uh and Wilkins and just him just coming to the room, just chilling out, watching TV, just playing PlayStation, right? Like those moments. Um, now that now that the you know tragic situation happened, I'm just trying to replay all of those all those great memories that I had with Marion. Um, and not only was he a great person, you know, he was a great football player as well. And, and, and he uplifted everyone, right. He, he, when he was so quick to, to get the, get the limelight off, off himself to mm -hmm. congratulate his teammates, congratulate the linemen and do all of that. So it's a, it's a very tragic situation. Um, still trying to process things, right. Like, uh, 
I, I specifically remember Marion coming to speak at Cooper High School. You know, he didn't he didn't have to do that. He pulled up on us and gave the gave my team a, a great word. And, and this is kind of what he what he represented, man. He was just an all around great person. And my thoughts and prayers still go out to the Barber family. Yeah, man, it, it's tough when, uh, you know, a guy our age, you know, 38, uh, you know, but you see Demarius Thomas, uh, you see Vincent Jackson. Um, you're seeing that more and more now where, where guys, it, it becomes a thing about isolation and, uh, you know, all the guys this weekend, we got a chance to go out. Uh, Yuki Dozier, Jared Ellerson, Asin Osai, John Richmond, DJ uh, Johnson, um, you know, Yuki Dozier. And so we all were, were talking about that, man. It's about being around each other. And I think that's the cool thing about us here in Minnesota. We've been able to connect and, and just stay connected uh, through friendship, through relationship. Um, and, and that's the key. Um, uh, one, one, one last one, of course, I have to do this. Um, it, it, just like any coach, you know, you say you got 16, one tens. Now you got two more, get on the line. So I got, I got, I got another bonus one for you, I guess. Um, when, when you see, because you're here in Minnesota and, and you've seen the 49ers Vikings game, you've seen the Vikings saints games, um, and you play quarterback for two seconds. What, what does Kirk cousins, <laughs> what does Kirk cousins uh, have to do to take that next step uh, for people to really consider him as a, as a as a great quarterback and and you know not just a guy on the team, right? So um, just being in Minnesota, I became a, a Cousins fan. I think that he's he's very efficient, but I think uh, you know quarterbacks are are measured off wins and losses in Super Bowls. So I think Kurt Kurt needs to take the coaching that's coming. Um, we got a Super Bowl coach that's coming. Um, I do believe Kirk is one of the top quarterbacks um, in the league. I just think he needs to get everybody involved in the game, um, take some shots down the field. There's been several times I was watching the Vikings games where, you know, the intermediate passes might work, but he, he I mean, you have you have the weapons. You have Jefferson, you have Thielen, you you have Cook out of the backfield. I just think we, we like I'm a Vikings fan, the Vikings need to, uh, you know, utilize that that those weapons that they have and, and allow Cousins to, to open up and throw the ball down the field. I think he's a, he's a great passer, um, but we need to see more of, of down the field throws. And I'm sure you, you know, you, you know that as well. Um, but I think Cousins doesn't get the um, credit he deserves really um, just coming here and, and just kind of being middle of the pack the last couple of years. I think that he, in order to get over that hump, um, need to spread the offense out. And I think that hiring this coach would, would benefit him as well.